This week in ME 800, remember there's no labs on Monday and no labs on Tuesday if you weren't paying attention. Uh, and the reason we do that is to make sure that we keep the lab sections sort of in sync so that section one and section two and three and four are pretty much doing the same exercises from day to day. Now you may get a little bit out of sync, but we try to keep you guys together. So again, no labs on Monday because, well, it's a holiday. No labs on Tuesday because, well, there was no labs on Monday. And, uh, and so we'll have lab on Wednesday and Thursday only. This this week. Uh, we did also take the uh, the CAM assignment that was due last Friday. We extended the, dead late, the deadline, the due date for that to be uh, to be Wednesday of this week and um, and you'll see that as we as we go through the labs if we realize that there's there's people getting behind either on exercises or on the the cam assignments we'll adjust those due dates as necessary but but again you know try to keep on it and there was a lot of people that actually got it done with no problem and uh, and that's great too so as you if you get something finished in lab that if you're able to move on to the next assignment so that you get ahead. Some of those you may end up getting behind. Some weeks you may spend more time on the machines and less time at the computer. So if the previous week if you had more computer time and you got a little bit ahead, it'll all even out at the end. And we expect different people in the class to be working on different things at the same time. And in fact, it's the only thing that makes those labs work. So again, remember, no labs on Tuesday. If you, had, uh, if you had lab scheduled for Tuesdays, no labs on Tuesday. Of course, no labs on Monday because of the holiday. Come prepared for, uh, for lab on Wednesday. In class, so in the lecture part of the class this week, Tuesday, we're going to talk about art to part and process variables. Wednesday, we're going to stay home. There's no class on Wednesday. Thursday, we're going to talk about CAD CAM and NC code. And so that NC code is the, the, the code that the machine tool sees and that you see streaming by on the machine tools controller as it's running a program. So again, no class on Wednesday, art to part and process variables on Tuesday, Thursday, CAD CAM and NC code. So art to part. So what's the art in manufacturing? Well, the, the art is sort of the, uh, it's the design. So we're not going to talk about the design this week. We're going to talk about taking an existing design, something that the designer created. Now sometimes, especially here at WPI, you might be the designer and the manufacturing person. But for this week, we're going to assume that the designer has done the design work. And the art in this case is the drawings, it's the solid models, it's the specifications for the parts that we're going to be man manufacturing. That's the art. What we want to talk about is taking the process of taking that art and making it into a finished part. We're going to look at the workflow going through that. We're going to look at how do you select the parameters and the, the different things. Now you've been exposed to some of that in lab last week and you'll see throughout the class that we have some repetitions. So we'll be showing you something in lab that we repeat the following week in, in lecture or we'll be showing you something in lecture that we repeat the following week in lab. And, and that's because it, it enhances the learning process to see something, take a break from it and see it again. So, so hopefully at the end of the, uh, the term, you will have had uh, maximum value added to you through this learning process. So again, we're going to look at art to part and process variables. So process variables are those things that the manufacturing engineer, the machinist, the setup person, those things that you get to choose. So those things that are not specified by the designer. So some process variables that you get to choose, for example, are what type of manufacturing process will I use to make this part? Is it a turned part? Is it a milled part? Now there's certainly some parts that you could either mill or turn and you could still make that final part. You get to decide what machine tool am I going to use? So that's absolutely an important process variable. You get to, uh, you get to pick the feed rate that the uh, the tool moves through the material, and I know you've been exposed to that in lab. You get to pick the uh, the spindle speed or the surface speed. And remember, the difference between spindle speed and surface speed is the spindle speed is how fast is the spindle turning in revolutions per minute, and uh, and the surface speed is how fast is the cutting edge of the tool moving through the workpiece material. And that's going to depend on the lathe. It's going to depend on the diameter of the workpiece. In the milling machine, it's going to depend on the diameter of the cutting tool. So remember, we're going to talk about, and, and of course, we'll talk about things like uh, depth of cut and, um, and width of cut in the milling machine. And, and so those process variables that the manufacturing engineer has to select. Again, no class on Wednesday. On Thursday, we're going to talk about the, the steps of going from that CAD file 
to the CAM software. Now remember the CAD is computer aided design or computer aided drawing. CAM is computer aided manufacturing or computer aided machining. And so that, that CAM software, the Esprit software that we're using in class. Uh, we're gonna talk about how you go from CAD to CAM to NC code. And so the NC code, you remember, is that it's that ASCII text language that the machine tool controller is expecting to see. So we're going to go through those things on Thursday. By the end of the week, I'm expecting you to have a thorough understanding of the difference between milling and turning. A, a thorough understanding of tool offsets and work offsets. We'll talk about that a little bit in lecture, but you're going to be going through that in labs also. Knowing how to select the right feed speed depth of cut, knowing how to create the experiment that determines what the right feed speed depth of cut are. We're going to talk about other process variables and you should have a good understanding of the things that are going to affect your ability to make a good part in a manufacturing process. We'll look at the workflow in manufacturing. So those are those steps that go from that solid model or from that set of drawings all the way through to the finished part. We're going to look at tool selection, parameter selection, and, um, and the use of reference materials as an engineer. Now I've heard it said many times that an engineer doesn't have to know anything. They just have to know which book to look in. So as we go through this class, we're going to be using a lot of different reference materials. You'll notice that although you had to buy that lab voucher, so the voucher to pay for the uh, materials for the class, you, uh, you didn't have to buy a textbook. And that's because a lot of these reference materials that, uh, that you're going to want to use are available to you from the library or from other online sources. And I want to teach you in part how to find the correct reference materials and, and how to use those reference materials once you've found them. So uh, again, Tuesday, Art to Part PVs. Thursday, CAD CAM. No lab Monday and Tuesday. Normal labs Wednesday and Thursday. I'll see you in class on Tuesday.